G'day there YouTube. Today I want to have a look at some school holiday fun I recently had with my daughter. Now we really like playing with toy gliders, have done for a few years now. It's great fun and it's quite educational too. Um, and we've been, you know, restricted to things like these balsa wood gliders or polystyrene gliders. And as you can see from some of the carnage here, they break. They break all the time. Either when you're throwing them and they get stuck up a tree, or like this bent wing here, just from being stored improperly, they bend and bow and things go wrong. You know, and you've got old paper planes, lots of fun too, but they also tend to not go great, or they get soggy or die. Um, so now that I'm 3D printing all manner of junk and toys and stuff, um, I of course can't go past these fantastic little toys if you see them. And you like toy gliders, these are well worth getting. I've seen them branded as little rippers or high flyers. I don't usually endorse products on my channel, but these guys are fantastic. They have airfoil shaped wings and they're all soft and squishy. They don't break. They fly great. We've lost these on third story roofs when the gust of wind's taken them high. Um, we've lost them way up trees and just plain flown away into the distance never to be seen again. They go really, really well. So anyway, we thought we'd take what we've learnt from looking at these designs and all these different designs and a project that we found on Thingiverse called Project Glider and we modelled up this. Now we were going to just print out the Project Glider things and I'll put a link to the description in that for that but um, we didn't like the wing attachment point and a few little details but we did like that they were rubber band powered and I don't have any rubber bands today but I did find a hair tie works quite well if it's stretchy enough and you can launch the planes I'll put in some footage of that working outside. Um, so let's have a quick look at some of the features here. We've got a nice long adjustable wing slot and that wing's actually stuck in with blue tack. You could use plasticine or almost anything that's kind of sticky and gummy. There's blue tack there, I don't know if that's just an Australian thing. Um, this stuff's often used to stick posters to walls where you can't use uh, nails or thumbtacks or whatever. Um, so we've got that stuck all over the place, there's extra weighting in that. Um, we've got, yeah, like I said, a big long wing slot. We can try a variety of different wings and we can try different wing positions. Same for the tail. We've got quite a nice big tail slot. We can move the tail back and forth, try different things. We've copied and a bit of angling. We noticed that all of these good ones had an, a downward angle compared in relation to the wing. You can see the same thing happening there. So, not knowing heaps about aerodynamics and aeronautical engineering, we copied what we could see worked and this one probably could have had a little bit more downward tilt there I'm not sure though it's got heaps of lift like, this is pretty heavy compared to these guys This, all of these planes here that we've bought all weigh 5 grams or less even even these heavier balsa wood ones with the, the nose clamps um, nose weights this guy weighs 5 grams just on the body and then an extra gram or two for the wings or 3 or 4 more depending on how you design your wings and all up it's nearly 10 grams. We did have a 3D printed tail but one of the things that definitely needs improvement is these attachment points I made. I put these holes that go right through um, and they can obviously limit the movement of the tail wing a little bit but you know it's a compromise situation there. Um, but as you can see the, the tail likes, tail rudder likes to break off. Now I did predict that happening so that's one of the reasons the holes go right through. You can just jam something pointy up in there and get it to stick up enough that you can then grab it with a pair of pliers and out she comes. And you can print up a new tail and stick it on there. But you can also, I wanted to show that you don't have to use all 3D printed parts. You can also play around with cardboard. That's just a bit of cereal box right, uh, that I cut up with a pair of scissors. Took like 10 seconds and stuck on with some blue tack. I reckon that'll fly. It hasn't been tested yet, but we'll put that in the video too. Um, I've also got some holes up the front here because we did find we're getting a lot of lift on these big wings. And so you can add some M3 bolts, nuts and bolts, which most people that make their own 3D printers have got heaps of lying around. We can customise that hole, obviously, and make different sizes. You can bolt on lots of washers. We wear blue tacking washers on the first body, which was a lot skinnier and a lot lighter. It was only 2 grams, but it wasn't very strong. I made it really thin, only one layer of... In, um, top and bottom fill and one outer shell and perimeter shell and not much infill and it broke apart at the nose from crash landings and it was way too light. We were adding 10-15 grams of weight to keep the nose down otherwise it was just nose lifting into a stall all the time. Um, 
so yeah, it was modified. Um, these wings were actually designed by my nine-year-old daughter in FreeCAD in like half an hour, an hour. It didn't take her very long to learn FreeCAD well enough to make some wings up. I was really, really impressed. It took me hours to learn how to make something like as simple as that. And she just picked it up really quick. I, I made the body with her watching and we talked about the measurements together and stuff. And after she saw how it was done, she was really keen to have a go herself and whipped these up in no time. I had to help a little bit with putting in the slots at the back so we could fold the elevators up. And there is some flaws there. You can see that one split and I had to glue it up with a bit of ABS juice. This is printed in ABS so it's very strong and flexible. And same with the wings, they really bend. No worries there. Um, and I've also catted up some wings of my own. These ones are actually aerofoils. These ones printed vertically on my printer and you can see I've got some z-axis issues that made them a bit wobbly towards the top. Went really straight up to about here somewhere and, and had some issues later up and the, the tape, that was supposed to just taper out smoothly to the back but because of the issues with the, the layer width and stuff it sort of did a funny thin bit at the back that broke off and went all tasselly. But that works alright, well, you can sort of bend them around a bit for elevators I think. Um, and also again I tried to print these really light. These wings only weigh about 3 grams each. They're really, really, really hollow. They've got nearly no infill and only single outer layers and two or three top layers. It's really, really thin. Um, and they were breaking all the time on the seam layers there. So I've painted them with um, acetone and ABS juice. You can see where I've patched it up a bit to stop them from... Um, to repair the cracks and stop them from splitting further. And now they've got quite a bit of flex to them without any cracking noises, which is good. And you can throw them around a bit. And I made these tabs that just fit in, removable tabs that slot in so we can slot it through the, the slot in the plane body there. And I've tried printing after, you know, those ones, these ones didn't go so great. I made another version. And these are really light as well, but I had issues with the printer blocking up um, some uh, bridging settings and stuff because I was trying to go really thin. Obviously need a bit of finishing work. I will actually repair these and I'll do another video on that. And they might even fly as is. Um, I also made the little holes a different size for the tab slot tabs, so I'll have to reprint some new tabs. But um, yeah, it all goes quite well. I'm really, really impressed with the project as a whole, so I'm going to stop rambling on about it all and we'll go and take them outside and launch them around a bit and see how they go. Okay, so as you see there, the, um, the old plane that we designed flies reasonably well. Needs a bit of fine tuning with the weight balance and the wing, wing adjustment and stuff. But I'll put all of these parts up on Thingiverse. And I'll put links in the description for everything I've CAD designed here. And I'll also include links to the original project glider that got all this started. And feel free to download and print and stuff yourself. Here's the original 
glider body that we made, the Mark I. As you can see, it's a similar design, but it really was not strong enough. It was way too light and flimsy. Not enough. Oh, about the right amount of infill, but the outer perimeter layers and top and bottom fill, one layer of everything was just not enough. You want two or three perimeter layers and two or three layers of top and bottom fill. It does make everything a little bit heavier, but this was way too light. We were the, the total plane with these really thin wings. That's only two layers. I think that's 0.4 of a millimetre thick. Um, was like six grams. It was in the same ballpark as these guys. And with the wings, look at, I mean, look at the wing area size. These wings had a lot of lift. We were adding 14 grams of weight to get that to fly at all without just going straight up into a nose lift and then a stall and then a nose dive, which is what caused the nose to break up. And, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons I've put all this plasticine, Play-Doh and plasticine around the, um, blue tack around the nose there because when it crash lands it's got something to give it a bit of impact resistance so anyway thanks for watching i uh, hope you like this video don't forget to like subscribe comment that sort of stuff if you want to see more of this kind of videos from my channel thanks for watching